Knesset member Moshe Turpaz, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Uh, it would be nice to start with the hope and optimism of the new Middle East that we see expressed in that picture there in the Negev summit uh, with your party leader, Foreign Minister Yair Lapid. But unfortunately, we also uh, uh, have witnessed uh, last night, uh, I guess, the violence and hatred of the old Middle East expressed in that terror attack in Hadera. This is the second terror attack within a week in which the perpetrators were Israeli citizens coming from Israel's Arab community. So how should how is the government how should the government be reacting to these circumstances? So the terrible terror attack yesterday in Hadera was, I think, an attack both on Israel as a democracy and on Israel as a Jewish state. And I think we should react in two manners. One should be a very strict, strong hand fighting terror. You know, I served many years in the IDF reserves. And fighting terror is part of who we are as Israelis. We know how to do it. And I expect the Shabak and our very good army to act very quickly and to find whatever is behind these terrorists and to get to whoever was in, involved in these two attacks. But I think at the same hand, what we see next to us, that's the future. I mean, today it's not Jews against Arabs, no more. It's not Israel against all the world. These are not the times. We have terrorists inside Israel and outside of it. We have to fight them very toughly. And yet, we have to put our hand to those, and there are many in us and in other countries, that are fighting with us against Iran, against ISIS, against terror. We have to define between these two parts, because if we don't do so, we'll go back to the years we were alone as a country. And that's not right anymore. We have a great army. And I think our, our policemen did a great job last night fighting and killing the terrorists. Very sadly, they did. we lost two of them. Right, at a high cost. But but let me ask you specifically about the Israeli-Arab community, because it suggests there are uh, some dangerous currents in some elements of that community. Uh, uh, and, uh, for example, in the situation that developed there in Umel Fahim, where they were from. Look, most of the Arab community in Israel, over two million people, want to live with us with peace. We're today in government with one of the Arab parties, and I think they are doing an important job representing their people. And I, and I say to Mansour Abbas, you are really an interpreter. You are, you, are, you are a leader. You are bringing the voice of, I think, most Arabs who want, want to live with us in peace. And yet, in the Arab community in Israel, we have some areas which ISIS and other organizations have been working with and, you know, brainwashing. And our uh, Shabak and other forces will have to be very quick and very firm. And I do believe we have the ability to take those uh, people out of us and, and to bring back peace to our streets. Right. Now, let's talk about the Negev summit, which you mentioned. And, of course, Foreign Minister Yair Lapid is the leader of your party. And I guess this is his signature achievement so far, this gathering. But where do you see this developing from here? So I do think this is not only a huge achievement of the current position Israel is holding in the Middle East and building um, a big coalition against Iran. But I think we must look at the future. And what this, uh, this you know, gathering has done, and we, we, we announced today that it's going to be an over year, you know, every year gathering of right. the Negev. I do think we are, we are looking, we could be looking, if we act right and rise, at a different uh, future. Because, again, it's not Israel, only Israel against Iran. It's all the, you know, the peace-seeking countries in the Middle East. That's a, a totally different position. This is a change a paradig paradigmatic change of how we want to fight our wars. If we do have to fight Iran and other countries, and as I said, I've done that for many years, right. we'll fight a different war. Uh, Moshe, you're a native-born American, uh, like myself. Uh, the role of the U.S. was key here, but there's a, a, a lot of dissatisfaction, of course, with its position, it appears, on the Iran nuclear treaty. Uh, is it too late to stop that from happening or to or, or somehow convince the U.S. to take other actions against Iran? We have a saying, a Jewish saying, uh, as long as the candle is lighting, you can still fix it. So I don't, I, I do believe it's not too late. 
But America has to understand our position today. Israel can't afford to take any risks at the Iranian issue, and we won't take risk, and we won't stand aside and look at Iran becoming nuclear. That's something very sharp that uh, Prime Minister Bennett and uh, Prime Minister and the Foreign uh, Officer uh, um, uh, um, Lapid is saying. We can't afford that, and we're doing whatever we can, including building a new coalition. Now, we do want the Americans to be part of it. And we know America has also other things on its mind, but Israel has to see its own and only its own uh, um, issues and to deal with them. And I do say, if we don't have any other uh, option, we'll deal with it alone. Right. Now, I want to move to the, uh, I guess, the biggest uh, global story, of course, currently, the Ukraine conflict, yes. particularly one issue, which is uh, Israel's role in both absorbing the uh, Jews from Ukraine, who are deciding to move here now or take shelter here, but also Israel's decision to take in uh, some thousands of non-Jewish Ukrainian refugees, which continues to be a source of uh, debate. Uh, in the government, even though they have reached a, a, a current accommodation, what's your feeling on where the government, how the government is handling the current situation? Look, I think the government is doing a good job. Uh, I myself went to um, Ben Gurion uh, Airport a few days ago to watch and to see how we deal with the Jews and the non-Jews that are coming here, and we're doing, uh, we're improving all the time. As for uh, non-Jewish -Jew refugees, I think we could be more generous. And I think we could open our hearts and our country for a few tens of thousands of people. And that's where I think we're heading. And in the same hand, we could bring here around 100, maybe more thousand um, Jews to be part of our country. So yes, I do believe our government is shifting there at the moment. And I do think that's where we're heading. Right. Uh, one last question. Uh, it's been uh, now this week, it's a year since the last election. The government has lasted more than people thought. But given the differences in the government, and we just mentioned one of them on the issue of non-Jewish refugees, and efforts by those who want to topple the government, including now the settlements community in, in, the, in, the, in Judea and Samaria and the West Bank that you're a part of, how confident are you that a year from now we'll be here and you'll still be in government? I do think uh, this government will last much more. And a year, two years, three years, we are heading there. I do believe that uh, we are a bridge between different communities. I see myself as, you know, modern Orthodox Jew, part of settlements, part of government. That's where this government should be. We have one party or one group which isn't in the government, and that's an ultra-Orthodox Haredi community. I would ask my friends my ultra-Orthodox friends, to join this government. I think it's a good government for Israel. And I have many Haredi friends. One of them was talking to me as I came in here. And he told me, look, we want you to last because this government is doing very good things to the achievements, the new achievements that the Haredi community needs. So you ask me, really? I think this government will last. I think we'll pass the budget in this coming year. And I do see a few more years of work for us. Okay, well, we haven't heard publicly those voices so much from the ultra-Orthodox Haredi community, but... Uh, we see them behind scenes and we talk with them. Okay, uh, Moshe Torpaz from the Yeshatid Party, Member of Parliament, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.